Well, thanks, for Nicole, for speaking with us. We really appreciate it. What I suppose we wanted to find out from today is a couple of things, but firstly, how do your corporate partners assist Ovarian Cancer Australia to do their, do their work? Well, we're particularly proud of the, the partnership that we have with Noel Jones. It's been a couple of years now, and I know that all of the staff are so passionate. And one of the things that, particularly for the Noel Jones partnership, is that when your um, salespeople and, and yep. staff are out there, when people see the teal ribbon, it's a conversation starter. So okay. it, it's the best thing in terms of a shop front for us, for people to say, what, what's that about? Tell me about that. And for, for your staff to actually know yep. that it's ovarian cancer and to tell people, you know, yeah. the, the women in your life, make sure that you're actually looking after them. But from a practicality point of view, if we're looking at how our partnerships work, I mean, we look after ladies that have ovarian cancer yes. and their families, yes. so the resources go into that. Um, also making sure that we actually um, have the resources to be able to go out and, and speak about ovarian cancer in yep. the community and also with our politicians so they actually sure. realise that we need to advocate for change. So yep. there are a couple of the really practical things. We've just um, in the last 12 months launched the Vision 2525 which is a reduction of 25% yes. in terms of the women that are affected by ovarian cancer um, in 25 years. So you know it's 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 such a, um, a sneaky cancer, so we need to make sure yeah. that we get as much word out about it as we can. Terrific. And Nicole, what are the most important things women need to know about ovarian cancer? I think the most important thing that, that a woman needs to know is to trust their instincts. And if they feel like there's something not right, the potential is that something's not right. Yeah, sure. And I think we get really busy and we often forget about our health. Men and women are the same with that. Yeah. But I think to take power and, and be empowered with your health. The important thing is that with ovarian cancer, people often call it a silent killer or a sneaky, sneaky cancer, but the thing is when women are actually diagnosed with it, it's almost like the jigsaw pieces have clicked in together. Yeah. yeah, so they realize that there are some common symptoms. So um, there has been some work done in terms of what those common symptoms are. They're things like, and I hope I don't make you feel like you've got ovarian cancer. No, that's all right, that's okay. <laughs> it's um, abdominal bloating and abdominal pain. Yep feeling of fullness and not just necessarily after eating. Um, it's, it's also um, a, a need to urinate frequently and sure. urgently. So they're, they're three of the, the big symptoms that yep. we know that once a woman's diagnosed, all of those pieces Start fit to together. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, but it's important to make sure that you actually keep a log of the symptoms. So if you are presented with symptoms in this area, the stomach sure. area, potentially the back as well, and it's new to you and it's persisting for more than you know two, three, four weeks, yeah. it's to actually take a note of those symptoms. So on our website, ovariancancer.net.au, we actually have a symptom diary. So because we get busy, we forget. Yep. So go on there and have a look and, and all of the information on those symptoms are also there. Uh, and that we get women to understand that ovarian cancer is actually out there. A pap smear doesn't protect you for ovarian cancer. There is no detection okay. test. But also having a sense of history, knowing what your family history is all about. Sure. For me, I have BRCA2. It's kind of been made a bit trendy by Angelina okay. Jolie. Yep. Yep. Um, but knowing whether or not you have BRCA1 or BRCA2 in your, in your family history, sure. uh, genetic testing, uh, and then you know what you need to do to actually protect yourself. Sure. So I've got a plan. I know what I need yep. to do. Um, so if you are in that genetic side of things, you can formulate a plan. But for the other women, we just need to make sure that they're well educated, well informed, and they're empowered sure. with, with their own health. And Nicole, how can people assist further? Well, there's certainly some ways that you can assist. The first thing is to, to be armed with knowledge so that you can talk about ovarian cancer. If and the, with the plan. If, yeah, and the conversation comes up. But there's actually a plan that you can sign up on, which is the 2525 plan. And go to ovariancancer.net.au to actually jump on to sign that so yep. that we can actually get people thinking about it. You can buy a teal ribbon, yep. um, which is only $2, which yep. is fantastic. Uh, and you can also have an afternoon teal. So yep. during our fundraising in February, we encourage everybody to have afternoon teals. Did you have one? We did, Good. yeah. Too many cakes and too many everything else, but that's <laughs> teal okay. Teal coloured cupcakes. Yeah, that's yeah. right, that's yeah. spot on. So spot on. plenty of ways, but yep. jump onto the website and sure. you'll be able to, and even volunteering. I mean, we can always yep. use volunteers as well. Sure. Thank you very much for your time. Thank we really you. appreciate thank it. Thank you to Noel Jones for all of the support that you give to Ovarian Cancer Australia. It makes such a huge difference, so thank you. Absolute pleasure.